Hello everyone, Wylock here. Happy New Year. The holidays have come and gone. My favorite time of year. Really special time. For me, it's all about being with the ones that you love. Packaging! Oh yes, the best time of the year. Cornucopia, influx of cardboard and all kinds of good stuff. Look at this. A Cuisinart oven thing. I don't even know what it is, but look what it came with. Yeah, these packing inserts are like, I thought, perfect for some sort of alien structure. And now I'm not the first person to use them for this purpose, but nonetheless, I thought I would show you how I used them to make my Necron Tomb World. Right, so packing inserts. These are often included in electronics and stuff like that. I'm just going to take it and cut away some of the lip, give it a nice clean edge. Then I'm going to base it on foam board. So put the container on there and just trace around it with, I don't know, three quarter inch of margin. Cut that out, and then if you're able, peel the paper off one side. Ready board from the Dollar Tree is really good for this, but it isn't totally necessary. It just makes the next step a little easier, which is to take a fresh blade, pretty far extended, and taper the edge like this. Knife blade at an extreme angle, and draw it back and forth as opposed to pushing. That'll give you nice clean cuts. Now line the edge of the container with hot glue and stick it on. Then for good measure, another bead of hot glue at the seam. Give it about 20 seconds to start cooling, and then you can splay it out with a brisk swipe from your finger. Hot glue cools quicker than you might realize. I have a knack for this after four years of working with hot glue for like every day, but if in doubt, just use the nozzle to spread it out. Then a base coat in black. I like to brush on black acrylic because it's much darker, truer black than you get from typical spray cans, at least the cheap ones. Takes a lot longer, but is worth it. Oh, and I forgot something. Gotta flock the base. White PVA glue, such as Elmer's Glue All, nice solid coat on the perimeter. Spread it out nice and even with a brush, and then dump sand. I use Quick Creek Construction Sand from the Home Improvement Store. Good because of its varying sized aggregate. A few hours and that's all dry. Time to get some black on that as well. Having a nice watery brush will help the paint to flow better into the sand via capillary action without being too dilute that you need a second coat. Another hour and that's dry. Take a gray of your choice and dry brush. If you're new to this stuff, that just means load the bristles with paint, but then immediately work it back off onto the palette so there's only a little bit left on the bristles and it's basically dry. Then lightly swipe at the sand, letting the sand do the work for you. It'll catch the paint from the brush. Unless you have some egregious misses, don't worry about those tiny spots you might have missed that are showing through the black. It's time to airbrush. Thanks to Vallejo for sending me these paints to try out. I've used other acrylic miniature brand paints before, but not Vallejo, so I'm excited to try them out. I'm gonna use Sick Green, then Escorpina Green, and then Moon Yellow. First up is Sick Green into the airbrush with some Flow Improver and water until it's the consistency of whole milk, and away we go. This piece doesn't have corners per se, it has rounded corners, and I'm just gonna trace all of those with a strong wide beam of this green few inches away, 30 psi on the compressor, nearly full blast on the trigger. I'm really impressed with the coverage here. Most anything over black doesn't show up well, but this does. If I go a little slower than my initial impulse, it lays down strong enough without spidering that I only need one pass. Awesome. So here it is all outlined. And now on to the Escorpina green. Very simple, just gonna retrace everything I just did but not quite so wide, maybe an inch closer and with the same amount of trigger action as before, about three quarters to full open. Nice. Starting to glow and arguably could call it here, but I really want to intensify that green glow. So moon yellow into the airbrush and retrace the final time. Now I'm only an inch away from the piece at this point, dialed up the pressure to 36 PSI and using half to three quarter trigger action. Just kind of got to feel that out. Yes, this has turned out exactly as I hoped it would. On a final note, you may see this. Doesn't sit flat. If that's the case, flip it over and paint on a layer of white PVA glue, undiluted. Spread it out evenly with a brush or your finger, making sure not to skimp on the edges. Honestly, that's where it's most important. Give this 24 hours to dry, even though it will seem dry after only three. Trust me, leave it alone for the full 24 hours. Fully cured and voila, we've counteracted that warping a very good amount. 
Now I made a lot of these and I'm about to show you an entire Tomb World city on a 6x4 foot table, models and all. But real quick, if you like this video, please don't hesitate to hit the like button, subscribe, bell icon for reminders, etc, etc. There is a link in the description below for my Amazon storefront, easy, free way to support the channel if you want, just buy your stuff through that link. And for all you 3D printers out there, Wylox Crafting Vids is sponsored by Heroes Horde, which has an excellent range of high quality models, including but not limited to all True Tiles lines, which are open lot compatible. Also check out my modules over on the DMs Guild, and remember, $3 patrons get free copies of all my releases. And here it is in all its glory. I think I have seven pieces on here in varying sizes. I saved over the months and years. Finally had this use for them, so I'm very happy with how it came out. New world to battle on. This is most of my Necron models, and uh, they're about 95% done being painted. So I apologize for the ones that aren't. I was very happy with the Vallejo paints. Uh, I'm kind of anal retentive. I wanted them to match my models, and I was worried that the different shades of green wouldn't, and they are different, but it's really not noticeable on this scale. The coverage is great. They went through the airbrush fine, so I'm excited to use them with a proper brush and try some other stuff. Now, I don't know if there is a defined canon view of what a Necron tomb looks like aesthetically. I'm sure if there is, one of you will comment below, and I would welcome the correction. But for me, free buildings that I just had to spend a couple hours painting up, it was worth it. So this is what my Necron tombs look like. By the way, if the idea of turning trash into terrain is interesting to you, you gotta go find Commissar Gamza on YouTube. Watch his playlist on Trash to Terrain. Awesome tutorials. Very accessible for an amateur, like myself. Also, everything you see on the table we've built before on the channel. It's from a previous episode, so if you're interested in it, go look through the backlog. Halfway through this, I suddenly got the urge to rebase my HQ models, so I did, and I'll show you that in an upcoming episode. Oh, and here's my objective markers. I'm actually using the translucent green sprue leftover bits that you get with Necron kits, and I use those to make the uh, crystals that are poking out there. The number of crystals tells you which objective marker it is. Working our way around the back street here up to the unit of Lich Guard, 10 of them, which I have never in eight games ever gotten into close combat. Annoying. And then over here, a crystal cluster around this uh, weird monolith thing. Again, those are in previous episodes. Lo, and on the seventh day, diddeth my poor airbrush rest. But it took it like a champ, still working fine. Iwata HPCS, love it. If you liked this particular project, here's two more that you should go check out right now. Also, enjoy this month's community showcase. And don't forget to subscribe and click that bell reminder icon. I am Wylock, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.